My name is David Cook. Today we're going to look at how to develop your own roll of black and white film. The first step in processing your roll of film is to prepare the chemicals. In fact, you need to do this before you even think that you're going to process your roll of film. You have to have the chemicals ready, you have to have them mixed in the right proportion, and they have to be at the right temperature. There are four chemicals that we use. The first chemical is the developer. We use Ilford, Ilfosol 3. We mix that with water, one part developer to nine parts water, and we have a 16 ounce jar ready to place that solution in, so it's ready for us to use. The developer is the most important part because it brings out the latent image that is on the film so that that image is visible. The second chemical is Ilford, Ilfosta. We mix that in another jar here, one part stop and 19 parts water. That stops the developing process so that the film doesn't go black from overdevelopment. After the stop, we use Ilford Rapid Fixer. And again, we put that in a jar, one of these 16 ounce jars, one part fix and four parts water. This makes the image permanent so that when the film is brought out into the light, it is no longer light sensitive, the light won't darken it. Now, after we've done that, we're going to rinse the film and we use a chemical called Ilford Ilfetol and that is a wetting agent so that uh, when it's rinsed and we put a little bit of this in it, just a pinch, that way the water will dry and it won't leave those marks that you sometimes see when water dries on a smooth surface. So this is a chemical process. We have to get everything ready just right and we need to have our funnels, our graduates, our jars, our chemicals, and it's also important to have the temperature right. Everything should be at room temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius. The next step is to process the film, and to do that we have to open the film, put it in the processing tank, and then apply the chemicals. Now, it's very important that we open the film and put it in the tank in a totally light tight environment there must be no light at all so these tanks are designed um, to keep out light 100 percent so we have here the lid the agitating stick the light tight cover which i'm going to unscrew and take off and then inside the reel on which the film sits and the spindle now i also have pair of scissors, can opener, and a lightproof bag. If you have a totally light tight environment where there is no light whatsoever, you don't need the light proof bag. But I like to use it just as a precaution to make sure that there is no hint of light because film is incredibly light sensitive. So when we are opening the film we want to make sure as we're loading it on the reel that there is no exposure to light or else your film will be ruined and all those beautiful pictures you've taken will be wrecked. Now we're going to open up the canister of film. It's important again that we do this in a light tight environment but we're going to do it here in full light so that you can see what I'm doing. You can watch the steps and you can follow along in your own dark room. The first step is to take the roll of film take a can opener and you find the end that is flat. There's an end that has a protrusion. We don't want to open it up on that end. We're going to open it up on the flat end here and you just take it as if you're opening a bottle. The can opener just sits right there like this. You give it a bit of a pop. Now I usually like to go around and get it on all sides. Open it up and then the end comes off inside you have the roll of film and you just kind of push out on that protruded ed edge and there you go now you have to be careful when you're handling the film that you don't touch the actual surface of the film but only the edges so 
you handle it very carefully on the edges like this. Now the first thing you need to do once you have the film out of the canister is you have to cut off this tongue. This tongue is just going to get in the way and it may end up jamming when you start to feed it into the reel. So we have to cut off that tongue. And again, when you're doing this in your own darkroom, it's in total darkness. So you have to have all your tools right there with you, know where they are, and it might be a good idea to practice a little bit before you go and do this. But you cut it right across the film like that, cut off that tongue. And then what you need to do after you've cut off the tongue is you have to start to feed it onto the reel. Now we have to put it onto the reel, and the way we do that with these uh, reels that are made by Patterson uh, with uh, this system of tank um, the reels are very easy to use you can see here on this reel that there are two ball bearings and then in front of them there are two protrusions the film has to go inside those protrusions and across the ball bearings once we get the film into that spot it's very easy to start rolling it onto the reel. Again, we have to do this in darkness, so you might want to take a junk roll of film and practice a few times with it. But what we do is basically line it up like this and just, just touching the end with your finger, you just pull it up through and get it over those ball bearings. Now once it's in place, it doesn't really want to go anywhere, it doesn't want to come out again it's not going to come back on you. So what you can do is just hold it in the reel in your right hand, the roll in your left, and then what you start doing is you start rotating this reel. Just like this. And as you rotate it, just be loose on holding the roll of film. Let that roll of film unroll in your left hand. And just keep rotating that reel. Just like this. It takes, oh, not even a minute to completely roll this film roll into the reel. And I'm just about to the end here. As you can see, what we need to do is to cut off the film right here. So I usually just carefully set that down, grab my scissors, and cut. You don't want to cut it back here, because there's probably a picture there that you took. So you want to cut it as close to the spool as you can. Okay, so this is what it looks like when we have the film on the reel. We make sure it is completely past the ball bearings. And as you can see, as I twist it back and forth, it doesn't want to go any further. So that tells me we've reached the end of the film. And you see the film is sitting there in these grooves. And in these grooves, keep the film from touching any other piece of film. Keeps it all separate so that the chemical is able to go through these holes and to affect the emulsion on that whole roll of film. Now. Once we have it on the reel, we need to put it inside the tank. So first of all, we have the spindle, which we place as such. Then we put it in the tank, just like that. We take the lid, the light tight lid, place it on. And you just turn it to the right clockwise. And then there's a place where it doesn't want to go any further. You just give it a little bit of pressure until it clicks. And once it clicks, it's not going anywhere. It's completely light tight. And you can take it into the light now. You can turn the lights on in your dark room, take it out of your light tight bag, and you're ready to develop it. Now that we have the film in the developing canister, we are ready to apply the chemicals and process this film. It's important that all your chemicals are ready, mixed, and at room temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important that you have some funnels on hand so that you're ready 
when a chemical is done to be able to pour it back into the jar. And again, time is of the essence. We have a timer here so that we can keep track of how long each chemical is in the developing canister. Very important. Right down to the second we have to be very precise. Now the first chemical is the developer. We have it here. We have to apply the developer to this particular film. This is Ilford uh, Delta 400 professional film. We need seven minutes of developing time. Now every black and white roll of film has a different developing time. To find out what time works with what chemical, you have to consult the data sheet that is in the box of the film or that is on the chemical itself. So the way we add the chemical, we see here in the developing tank, there is a hole and the chemical goes right in that hole. So, we're going to add the developer right now. Sometimes it splashes a bit, so it's good to be careful as you're pouring it. and Make sure you don't have anything around that is going to get damaged from the developer. So we put it in. We use the agitation stick. We fit that in there as such. And we just give it about 10 seconds of agitation to start just to make sure that chemical gets on the whole surface of the film. After 10 seconds we give it a little tap to dislodge any air bubbles. We let that sit for one minute. Then every minute for the full seven minutes of this developing process we give it 10 seconds agitation. Again, every minute for each of those seven minutes, 10 seconds of agitation. Give it a little tap at the end to dislodge any air bubbles. Now when we get close to that time, we have our jar ready, our funnel ready. We take out the stick, give it a bit of a tap, and then we are ready to pour the chemical back into the jar. Now the way it pours is there's a little hole right around the edge of the developing tank. We just have to pour it out through that little hole and we refill the jar. We try to do this as quickly as possible but we don't want to make a mess. Once that's done we set aside that jar and cap it. Now we're ready for the next part which is the stop. Now the stop stops the developing so that your film doesn't go black. It's important we get that in there as soon as possible. The stop doesn't take very long at all. 10 seconds of agitation once it goes in. Very quick. We don't want to leave it in there too long because the stop is an acid. It can deteriorate the film if it's left in there too long. After 10 seconds we get our next funnel. Always use a different funnel so you don't mix any chemicals together. And we pour it out just like this. Make sure all that chemical is out of the canister. And then we just set aside the stop. Next is the fix. This is the last but not least part of the chemical process. The fix is what makes the image permanent so that we can take the film out and see the pictures that we've taken. We put the fix into the developing jar and we agitate it again for the first 10 seconds. Give it a bit of a tap and we let that fix do its job for five minutes. Every minute we give it another 10 seconds of agitation and then again tap it. When the five minutes are up we get another funnel. We have that ready. Take out our agitating stick and we pour it into the last jar. 
as such. Again, you want to do these very carefully but very quickly. Make sure all the chemical is out. Now, once you've done that, we set aside that jar, take out the funnel, make sure our jars are capped. We don't want to spill any chemicals. And now we're ready for the final wash and rinse. After we've applied the fix, we need to wash the film. The best way to do it is to use running water and we wash it for four minutes. Uh, there is a special hose that you can get provided by Patterson that fits right in this hole and it connects to your faucet and you just run the water for four minutes. If you don't want to do that, you can simply pour water in, get the agitating stick, agitate it, pour it out, and do that about five, six, seven times over the four minute period so that it's got lots of fresh water to clean away those old chemicals. Now, after the four minutes, we fill up this canister, this tank, we fill it up with water. And the best type of water to use is distilled water because normal household water tends to have particles of uh, calcium or lime and that can leave a mark on the film. Uh, it can be washed off, cleaned off, but it's nice to not have any of those marks on your film when you're done. So if you get a bottle of distilled water, fill it up, rinse it up, rinse it off once, dump it out, fill it up one more time with the distilled water. And then once you've got that water in here, and you fill it up to the pretty well top of the tank there, then you need to add one very small spoonful, just a pinch, of wetting agent. And we have here the Ilfetol. And uh, we just have to open that up. We take out one pinch, we dump it in, and then we just give it a bit of agitation. And what that will do is make sure that when it dries, there aren't any watermarks on it. So we leave that there for one minute. When we're done with that, we take the film out and we hang it up to dry. We'll show you how to do that next. After we remove the film from the canister, from the developing tank, we then take out the spindle. And now we have to remove the film from the reel to allow it to dry. Now the best way to do that is find the edge of the film, pull it out a little bit, and if you have one of these hangers or something like it, we attach that on the end. And all we do is simply give it a gentle pull and it will come out all on its own. When we get to the end of the film, it comes off the reel like this. We want to grab the end so it doesn't fall on the floor. And uh, we just pull it off like that. And then we need to attach the other hanger to it. So we get that hanger. Again, careful only to hold the film by the edges or by the very ends. And then once we have that hanger attached, we find a place in a dust-free room, hang it up, and give it about four hours to dry. Now that the film is dried, we're ready to cut it into segments and to put it into a archival preserver or some sort of sleeve to keep it away from the dust and dirt. I've cut my film up here into these four and five frame segments and uh, here we have the final product you can hold this up to a window and get a really good look at the pictures you've taken once you've done this. And you'll see that the lights and darks are all reversed. That's what a negative is. It uh, reverses the light and dark. And we're ready to print these now, to enlarge them and to make prints on photographic paper. So we hope that you've really enjoyed this time. 
that we've had together learning how to develop a roll of film and I hope that you will also come and visit my website and take a look at some of my photographic art and if you have any questions feel free to drop me a line. My website is www.brucephotoarts.com. Thank you and God bless.